What is going on you guys? This is TechHD coming at you with a brand new video and today we're going to be taking a look at a new Wi-Fi system. This is from the company Tailtronics and they sent out a whole home Wi-Fi system. It is a mesh Wi-Fi system. It is a three pack but they also have a two pack. This is the AC3000 tri-band mesh Wi-Fi router and I'm super excited to try this out because I've never tried a mesh Wi-Fi system in my house. I live in an apartment so there's really no need for it but the major benefit that I got one is because I have so many devices hooked up to one router. I have about over 60 devices, uh, a lot of smart devices, smart locks, light bulbs, uh, thermostats, all stuff like that. And then I have all my gaming stuff as well. So one device I feel like is not enough, whether it's an 802.11ax or an AC Wi-Fi system. So I wanted to separate all the devices evenly using three nodes total. So that's why I wanted to test it out. I wanted to see how well it performs. So we got three of them. I'm going to be setting them up in my apartment, see how well it performs. We're going to be unboxing it, taking a look at it, do a bunch of speed tests and all that, and then see overall how it does. So now taking a look at what we get in the box, we got a quick start guide, an ethernet cable, three AC power plugs, and the three Wi-Fi mesh routers. Taking a look at the ports of the router, each router has a USB 3.0 port for file transferring, three gigabit LAN ports, one gigabit RAM port, the power connection, and the on and off button, and a reset button. Taking a look at the specs of the Wi-Fi mesh routers is an AC3000 tri-band system having speeds of up to 400 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz band, 866 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz band, and 1.7 gigabit per second on the 5.8 gigahertz band, totaling up to 3 gigabits per second. Two of the routers can cover up to 5,000 square feet and the three pack can do 6,000 square feet, so it's perfect for any household. It claims to be able to support up to 200 devices. Each router has a 4 gigabit ethernet port and one USB port and it has some cool features like MU MIMO, Beamforming and QoS. The 2 pack costs $129 and the 3 pack costs $199 at the time of this recording but the retail value is $289 and $349. Now setting up the router is actually very easy. First you'll want to download the TT router app on your Android or iOS device. Once you do that and you log in, it'll show you a step by step on what you'll need to do, like for example powering off the modem and existing router you have. Unplug everything and replace the old router with the new one. Plug everything in and turn on the modem first and wait until it's fully online. Once that's set, turn on the router and wait until it's fully powered on and ready to go. You'll see the indicated light flashing green. Once it's ready, the app will ask you to turn on Bluetooth, then it'll start to search for the router. Once it finds it, you'll need to give it a name and then it'll search to make sure that the connection is stable. Once that's set, you'll want to give it an SSID and password. Once that's all created and you're connected to the Wi-Fi, you'll want to set up another TT mesh router. You give it power, turn it on, and wait for it to be blinking green. Once it's ready, the app will be searching for a device and once it detects it, you'll want to give it a name as well. After that, it will want to connect to the network and once that's all done, the second router is all ready to go. Lastly, you'll want to do the same thing to the third router the same way that you did for the second router. Give it a name, connect it to the network, and you are all set. The last thing you want to do before we move these to the other locations is to make sure all three routers are up to date with their firmware. To do this, you'll want to go to the settings, then scroll to the system settings and select firmware upgrade. It'll tell you which device needs an upgrade. Select the tap to upgrade button and then it'll take about 3-5 to five minutes to fully upgrade and reboot the devices. After that you are all set. Now the location where I want to put my other routers is one being in the bedroom where my original Xbox One and PS4 are and that's about half the distance of where the main router is. The third router I want to put in my living room where my TV, Xbox One X and PS4 Pro are and that's on the opposite side of where the main router is. What I love is that each node has three ethernet ports, so you could wire whatever devices you want and that will give you the fastest and most reliable speeds. I tested this out on my Xbox One X downloading an update, the wired option was much faster, going from 50 to over 100 megabits per second compared to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band fluctuating a lot and barely reaching 50 megabits per second. All right, you guys, so now what I want to show you is some of the features that the app actually provides and what you're able to do when it comes to the routers itself. So we got the home menu right here, and then we are showing three of the routers that are actually set up and connected. We have online devices. We have a total of 59 devices hooked up to my router right now. And then if we click on that, it shows us that we have a 59 out of 73 total devices. So 73 devices, that could be from friends that came over and hooked up to it. Um, stuff like that so it tells you what is wireless what is wired what is currently uh, taking up bandwidth what isn't and then it's also showing you what 
uh, what device it is like for example the Xbox One X my phone and some other IP or Mac addresses and stuff like that if we click onto the routers it'll show you which ones are currently online like the studio living room and the bedroom and then for example the studio it tells you how many connected devices are hooked up to it right now so 34 devices are currently connected to the studio router so we got that set up and then we got the living room which only has three which is pretty bad in my opinion I feel like there's a lot more devices close to the uh, living room router that I feel like should be connected and then some of it is weird because the Elgato that is a ring light and that's actually right here that's where the uh, it's closer to the studio one I don't know why it's connected to the farthest one the actual living room so that's one thing that I don't like about this is the fact that I'm not able to specifically have the devices connected to those specific nodes so like I want to manually set this all up myself I want to manually have certain devices connect to only one of the nodes because it's actually physically closer to it and it's not moving at all like light bulbs um, ring doorbells the smart lock stuff like that and then it shows me the signal quality so I got three terminal right there and then I got 23 connected to the one in the bedroom which is pretty good so well balanced as far as those two go the living room though only three devices are connected to it which i don't like i want to uh, have it be separated uh, evenly so that the bandwidth and everything is nice and balanced but then if we go into the settings we got the wi-fi settings of course we got the network settings we got the radio settings and then here in the radio settings you are able to change uh the bandwidth the channel stuff like that i keep it all on auto and then I'm able to do the bandwidth settings and I keep it all to the maximum, which is 40, 80, and 80 on all of the nodes. And then some of the things of the advanced settings that you're able to do is the AI system optimization. This one I have it set to do every day at 6 a.m. Um, it optimizes itself to get the best settings possible. And then we got AI Wi-Fi optimization. And that one has the automatic channel selection, the bandwidth selection, the power selection, quick roaming, AP steering and band steering that is all enabled by default which is really good and then we got AI QoS the QoS is really cool I selected the bandwidth that I'm actually paying for so I have spectrum internet I'm paying for 400 megabits per second on the download speed and 25 megabits per second on the upload speed so I put that manually and now I should be able to get those types of speeds which is really good we have the UPnP and the DMZ which is actually really beneficial when it comes to gaming and some other uh, specific devices uh, for some reason if you have like a moderate or strict NAT type in gaming you can DMZ your device it's not safe of course because that's removing it from the firewall but you can DMZ your device to get an open NAT type and hopefully that helps out and then we got firmware upgrades you could turn off the LED lights you could do a, a reboot from the app itself one of the things that I don't like is that you are not allowed to separate the 5 gigahertz band you have the 5 and then you have the 5.8 for some reason you can't separate those two you're only supposed to have a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz band I would love for there to be a 5.8 like I'm able to have all three of them uh, separate and give them different SSIDs so then I can have certain devices connect to the 5.8 and then other devices connect to the 5 gigahertz because if we were to look at statistics and we were to able to look at Wi-Fi stats it's telling me that we have a total of 53 terminals right now and then we have 43 connected to the 2.4 gigahertz and then we got 10 connected to the 5 but nothing is connected to the 5.8 the second 5 gigahertz band it is a backhaul so literally they like this these devices are not using the second 5 gigahertz band which i think is pretty pointless i know it automatically does it but i would love to have more manual functionality to manually do it myself to have like i said certain devices connect to the 5 gigahertz and other devices connect to the 5.8 so like my consoles and and other stuff like that connect to the 5.8 and then other devices like my laptop and my phone connect to the 5 gigahertz band so that i can make sure that everything as far as bandwidth is perfect and then all the other stuff can be connected to 2.4 but that's about it as far as the app goes very bare minimum nothing too crazy very simple for the regular users it's nothing crazy like a gaming router itself there's nothing crazy when it comes to qos functionalities nothing like that it's very basic very bare minimum i wish they had an actual ip address on the computer so i could do all the settings on my computer but unfortunately there isn't i'm only able to do uh changes on my phone through the app which is kind of weird I, if i try to put the the uh, ip address of the router it won't pop up anything which is pretty weird to be honest that's like a first most of the most of the routers that themselves have an actual ip address for you to use on both your laptop computer uh, tablet and on your phone so 
kind of weird that you are only limited to the app, but maybe that'll be something that they'll add later on. So now what we're going to do is a bunch of different speed tests. So we're going to be testing out the 2.4 and the 5 unit band on my phone. And the first one that we're going to be doing is on the main unit right here. We're going to be testing out the closest one, see what type of speeds I'm getting on the 2.4 and the 5 unit band in the download and upload speed. And then we're going to be moving around. We're going to go to the farthest of my apartment. We're going to go downstairs and then we're going to also do an outside test and see how well the square footage is and how good the speed is. So let's start out with the 2.4 gigahertz band. We are set up to the closest server right here and let's see we are getting around 14 milliseconds in the ping and 8.9 milliseconds in the jitter and then we are averaging around 40 megabits per second on the download speed and just to let you guys know i am paying for 425 on the download and upload speed and i have spectrum so we got 38 megabits per second on the download speed which is pretty bad it's not that good in 2.4 gigahertz but of course this is 2.4 this is not the 5 gigahertz band so Definitely, uh, I wasn't expecting it to be really high up there, but we got 38 and 22. So 22 is basically close to where the upload speed is what I'm paying for, but 38 seems to be really low. So now let's connect to the 5 gigahertz band and see how this one performs. Let's close it down. Let's make sure that I am at the same location. And then let's see what test we're going to be getting on the 5 gigahertz band. Same thing, 14 milliseconds and 3.7. Ooh, look at that. We are at 400, a little over 400 megabits per second on the download speed, and I am paying for 400. So I'm getting way more than what I'm paying for, which is really nice. And that is really good to see. So 440, and I did mess with the QoS, of course. I did tell the router what my speeds are, what I'm paying for. So this is what I should be getting. And then I got 23 megabits per second on the upload speed. So exactly what I'm getting really nice there's no bottlenecking or anything like that i'm literally within a foot <laughs> away from the router so now that we have a good idea on what i should be getting now let's test out the other locations and see how well they perform all right you guys so now this speed test we are testing out the distance so we are at the farthest part of my apartment which is where my door is where my front door is and the main router is all the way on the other side there's multiple walls there's multiple different furnitures but we have the third router right here where the tv is so hopefully my phone is connected to that one since that is technically the closest one so now we're going to be running a speed test we got the iphone 12 we are doing the 2.4 gigahertz first and we're going to be seeing how this one performs we got 19 milliseconds as far as ping goes 3.9 milliseconds as far as jitter goes and it started to go to the 40s now it's fluctuating down to the 20s high 20s so it seems like we're around 30 megabits per second as far as the download speed keep in mind though that this is the 2.4 gigahertz band so it is going to be much slower when we switch to the 5 gigahertz it's going to be much faster so now we capped at 35 on the download speed now we're at 22 23 megabits per second on the upload speed and it seems to be pretty consistent which is really good so we're at 23 megabits per second on the upload 35 on the download which is still very doable so now let's switch over to the 5 gigahertz band okay so now we switched over to the 5 gigahertz band so now if we do it again with the same server and everything same distance i haven't moved 13 milliseconds and we are at almost 400 megabits per second which is actually what i'm paying for as far as spectrum goes so we are at 400 megabits per second so i'm getting the best speeds possible i'm getting actually what i'm paying for 13 milliseconds in ping 7.9 milliseconds in jitter 415 megabits per second in the download speed and about 22 23 megabits per second on the upload speed let's see how this one caps at i am paying for th uh, 25 megabits per second on the upload speed so i am roughly where i'm supposed to be at so basically five units band is of course the way to go we all know this and that is great so now hopefully my phone was connected to the to the third one the closest one but overall the speed is really good not so much on the 2.4 but the five gigahertz band is definitely the way to go Okay you guys, so the next speed test that we're trying out, and excuse the echo, is actually in my garage. So we're testing it out to see how it is on the first floor, and as an example, the router being in the second floor, so having to go through the wall. So we have the 2.4 set up, let's see how this one goes. Of course, doing the same thing, same server and all. We got about 20 milliseconds as far as the ping goes, the jitter is about 30 milliseconds, and we are averaging around 40 megabits per second, so actually really good. I'm actually right underneath the one in the bedroom so that will be the best way to get the best signal hopefully it's connected to that one and not the one of the main unit or the one to the living room but we got 36 megabits per second on the download speed and on the upload speed we're doing pretty bad at like around five megabits per second 
but normally this is 2.4 so it usually doesn't do that good anyway the milk uh, the ping is a little bit too high and the jitter is definitely higher than normal so we got 36 and 5 now if we switch it over to the 5 gigahertz band let's see how that one performs okay so now we switched over to the 5 gigahertz band so let's see how this one performs we got 16 milliseconds of ping the jitter is 3.7 milliseconds so really good right there 300 plus megabits per second on the download speed. We're about to hit at like around 400, which is what I'm paying for, which is great. 380, really good. So if you have anything connected here, like I have my uh, automatic garage thing to open up the garage with my phone, I, um, I'll have no problem when it comes to the signal there or any other smart devices that I have here. I'll have no problem being able to control it. We're at 390 and 23 on the upload speed, which is really good. So strong signals as well. If you were in the first floor and your router's on the second floor or vice versa, you'll have no problem as far as getting the signal, which is really, really good. All right, you guys, so now we are outside. I want to try out the speed test as far as how the range and the performance goes in speed. And we are about across the street from my apartment. Now this covers 6,000 square feet. We got all three of them set up and my apartment is 750 square feet. So definitely overkill, but I do have a lot of devices hooked up. So now we have a speed test pulled up. We got the 2.4 gig, uh, gigahertz set up and we're gonna be trying this out on my iPhone 12. We are connected to the closest server and let's see how this one performs. 21 milliseconds in the ping, 7 milliseconds in the jitter. It seems like I'm fluctuating around 15. Okay, it just went straight. That was quick. So 15 megabits per second in the download speed. Now let's see how this upload goes. Seems like it's staying frozen. It's fluctuating a lot. Okay, okay. So it's staying around 0.40 megabits per second. So not that good, honestly, for what I'm getting. And there's not so much walls or barriers. This is like open area. So. I should be getting a little bit more when it comes to the speed and hopefully my device, uh, my phone is connected to the closest one and not to the one like in the studio or in the living room. Hopefully it's connected to the one in the bedroom but it's all automatic. So it should be determining. But now let's switch over to the 5 gigahertz band and see how this one performs. Now we're just going to do run it again and see how this one goes. Same thing as far as the server and everything goes. Now we got 16 milliseconds. Oh, but we got way, way, way better speeds. So now we got 115 megabits per second. We got 16 milliseconds in ping and 4.3 milliseconds in the jitter. So 160 megabits per second in the download and we are going at around 20 megabits per second in the upload, which is basically what I'm paying for. And that 116 is still pretty good as far as how the range goes. So five gigahertz is actually very doable as far as the range and going across the street from where I live. So. That's actually pretty good, honestly. The 2.4 was struggling, but of course it's gonna be slower speeds than the 5 gigahertz man. But overall, not too bad, honestly. The range and everything, and if I walk a little bit farther, I'll still have pretty good signal. Now, of course, the farther I go away, the less uh, speed I'll get. So I'm not sure how that will perform, but overall, very doable, very doable. So let's go back inside. Now, my overall thoughts, testing and using the tri-band Wi-Fi mesh system for over a month now has been pretty great. Like I said before, the major reason why I wanted to try this out is because I have a lot of devices connected to my internet. And so having one router will just congest the bandwidth and sometimes my devices will not work properly. So having my devices spread around three nodes have been working great and the range of course has been amazing and definitely overkill for my apartment. All of my devices like my smart lights, ring doorbell, smart locks, and security cameras have been working seamlessly and has also been reliable and responsive. And even getting into gaming has been pretty great as well. Even though that this isn't a gaming router, this still has some QoS and my ping has still been low and I've barely lagged in multiplayer games. I've also live streamed on Twitch and gamed with this router and it's been overall great. And with the price, I think this will be a great choice for any household that has multiple devices, families that has kids who game a lot and want to cover a whole house and then some. This also looks nice and modern, not having a bunch of external antennas so it could fit in any location in the house. Now, of course, this isn't perfect, and there are some things that I would love for Teotronics to add in a future software update and a newer model. Number one is give me the option to separate the two 5 gigahertz band and to name the SSID differently and to have a different password so I could specifically have certain devices connect to that one device and then the other ones connect to the other 5 gigahertz band. You saw in the app that the second 5 gigahertz band wasn't even being used and like a majority of the time, so it defeats the purpose of having it be a tri-band. 
The second thing is I would like the ability to manually assign devices to be connected to a specific node and to not change. The living room node, for example, was barely even being used with only three devices being connected to it. And some devices like the Elgala ring light, for example, is connected to the farthest node, making it less responsive. So give me the option to have each node be connected in a balanced way. Lastly, this is only an 802.11ac Wi-Fi and we are already at Wi-Fi 6 or AX and even Wi-Fi 6E which offers some great features for households that have a lot of devices like myself and this is technically already outdated. So I hope that Tailtronics comes out with a Wi-Fi 6 version soon. But that's about it, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys do have any questions or concerns, please let me know down in the comments below as well as everything will be linked down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you guys can be notified whenever I upload a new video. Follow me on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitch. As always, Tech HD. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!